Assalamu alaikum to start with. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa It's such a pleasure to have you on, Kaylee. Welcome. Thank Welcome. you. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Um, so everybody, um, peace and blessings be upon you. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And uh, today I'm doing an interview with our sister here, Kaylee. I thought it'd be a good idea to to interview her, and uh, she kindly accepted the um, the invitation. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me. Ah, it's my pleasure, absolutely my pleasure. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, obviously my name's Kaylee. I'm from uh, Aberdeen in Scotland. Okay. Um, Scotland. <laughs> the Highlands. <laughs> Wait, the where the men wear kilts. <laughs> I mean, not on a day-to-day -day basis, but I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, I'm a new reaver. I've only been a Muslim since the 4th of November last year. Welcome um, to Islam. Welcome to Islam. Jazakallah. Um, so, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a short journey for me. So, well, it's been a long journey for me, really, in the long run, but I've okay. only been a Muslim for a very short period of time. Okay. MashaAllah. What was it that made you come to Islam, if you don't mind me asking? Um, well, to be honest, it was definitely the Palestinians. Um, okay. They're their courage and their, their 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 faith was so inspiring to me that mm. I have the answered. Obviously as well being an ex Catholic, um like with the Trinity, those kind of those kind of things. There were just questions that I could never I have a straight answer for. And then I came to Islam and everything I asked was answered very direct, very um it was very simple. Mm. You know, it it just made sense. Do you wanna tell everybody a bit about how you came across my channel? Yeah so Really, I was just I was just scrolling through TikTok, and you came up on my FYP, so I clicked and I was I was listening. Sorry, in. Uh, if I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. What's the FYP? For you, Paige. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know. What <laughs> so you like the for you section <laughs> on your TikTok. Okay, okay. I understand. So it was it was like things that are recommended to you based on the things you watch. I see. Okay. Cool. So your your live came up uh, there. And I mm. obviously just clicked on it and and started watching and listening to you talk about Muhammad Karsim and his dreams. And mm. I was just instantly really interested to learn more about his dreams. Okay, so um, what did you do um, to learn about his dreams, if you don't mind me asking? Well, first of all, I, I went to your page because okay. obviously it was your account I came across. Mm. And um, I, I just went straight to your TikTok account and I looked at the videos um, and then after that I went to your YouTube channel where there were more videos, more in-depth videos, longer mm. videos I could watch. And then I, I did ask, I did ask other people's opinions and stuff on what, what had happened, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed listening actually to Muhammad Carson himself speak in okay. a lot of videos that you have. It was good to hear kind of like from the source, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know I understand I mean? you. Yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying. So yeah, yeah, it is nice listening to what he has to say because he doesn't speak uh, anything apart from what he's been shown in his dreams. So um, what do you think about the dreams? So I mean, for you as a new Muslim, wh when you heard about these dreams, what do you actually think about them? What's your opinion on them? The, re the real reason I, I say I believe in his dreams is... Mm. Oh, like so you believe in the dreams? I believe in his dreams. Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah, Mashallah, yeah. okay. Um, it's, it's because they, for me, they make sense. He has had dreams about things that you could say were predicted before they happened. So he dreamt mm. something and then it, in the space of a year to however many years it took for those dreams to come true, they came true. Yeah. So I think for me, I just find it hard to think why people might not believe in them when they've come true. I understand. And there's things that have come true that no one could have just predicted they were going to happen. There is mm. no signs before they happened, if you know what I mean. No, I understand, yeah. Can I just say one quick thing? Go ahead. I just want to make it very clear to everybody who's watching. I believe in Muhammad Karsim's dreams, but I do not claim him to be the Imam Mahdi. Just okay. so people understand that. For, for someone who is new to Islam, mm. uh, it's quite a step for you to take to, you know, have come in this direction, which is something I've not really seen. I've only seen a few people do that, but for yourself coming here and, and becoming a Muslim 
and then coming into a place where I think it's quite obvious that you see the barrage of um, hatred that we get from people. So one view on what you've seen uh, from the people who are saying the things that they're saying in the comments and the comments they're leaving in videos. Like you must have done some research, right? So you must have seen how people are acting and stuff. What's yeah, your... yeah. Um, I mean, you see it everywhere. If you go to YouTube, no matter whose channel you go to who speaks about Muhammad Karsim, the same with TikTok. I mean, I've posted a f only maybe two or three videos and a few stories of things on Muhammad Karsim and his dreams. And I have already experienced a lot of um, unpleasant comments, may we, may we say. I just think it comes from a place of, I know a lot of people have so much knowledge about mm. Islam and they might look at, they might look at others and think maybe they don't have as much. I wish that the people would go at it at a different approach. Maybe look at the videos, listen to his dreams, listen what he, to what he has to say firsthand about the things he experiences. Because I don't want to say at all that it comes from a place of ignorance by any means, but I think it comes from a place of it being unknown and it maybe being something that people might just not want to accept. So it's easier to just deny it than to to look into it and to, to listen to what he has to say. Mm. You're, you're right. Um, going to the source, as you mentioned earlier on, that is very, very important. I mean, in the Quran, it tells us that we have to investigate if someone brings you news. Mm -hmm. And um, that's obviously from what you've said, by your own admission, that's what you've done. You've, you've, mm -hmm. you've seen my TikTok, you looked into it. And I mean, what do you think about him as an individual from what you've done from your research? As an individual, as a person, like what do you think yeah. about him? I think he seems very genuine. Mm. I think... As well, the fact he has never once in any of the videos that I have watched ever made any type of claim to be the Imam Mahdi. Mm. Um, he just shares his dreams because yeah. he's been asked to share his dreams. And right. I think like any of us, if we were asked to share our dreams, we would. Mm. Um, but yeah, I just think he seems very, very genuine. I don't think there's anything about him to me that sticks out that he would do this for any other reason than because he was asked to do it understand you know many people have their views and opinions about people but it seems that you have looked into the matter yourself um did anybody force you or or compel you or threaten you to believe in his dreams by any chance no definitely not no no Are you sure i'm positive nobody forced me to do anything i'm here from my own free will just like when i join your lives i join them because i want to learn and to listen and the same when I go to any YouTube page, no one's forcing me to do it, you know. Yeah. So um, I have noticed that you've been on both sides of the fence. So you've been on, um, you've been in other lives and you've you've actively been helping in other people's lives. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's absolutely fine. It's, it's your life. You do what you want. Um, but you've also been in our lives. How has, has that affected you in any way, shape or form? Like as an individual, have you come to any realizations, anything like this? Um, I think the with the the lives, for example, because like you said, I go into your lives and I mm. go into s some other lives, and there's definitely a difference of a, opinion. And, like a contrast. Yeah, the, it's, it, there's definitely a contrast, and I think it does cause some type of division because they are very different opinions that obviously I have to maybe some others. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I think it's just like. I have to, as a new Muslim as well, I have to find my own way and find my own path. And well, yeah, you're right. You know, you have to find your own path and you should seek knowledge from the people who have knowledge. Um, obviously, you're aware that I don't claim to have any special powers, no knowledge. Um, I don't claim to be a scholar or an imam. Mm -hmm. I've never told anyone I study at any kind of Islamic educational institute, which kind of brings me onto my question. So when it comes to this whole topic of Muhammad Qasim, um, you take the element of logic, right, from from the evidences like Quran and hadiths and things like that. You know, you hear people saying, oh, this this hadith and that hadith. Being a new Muslim, how are you supposed to know these sort of informations? Because you don't really know these information. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So when when you come across people who's talking about Qurans and hadiths and stuff like this, and then you come across someone like me who doesn't really talk much about Quran and hadith, like how do you feel knowing that you're you could potentially be just listening to someone because he's talking from his heart rather than using the evidences from Quran and the hadiths. Well, from my experience anyway, with coming into your lives, like you do talk very, you, you do talk from the heart and you do talk about the experiences you've had, for example, with Muhammad Karsim and, and speaking with him and meeting him firsthand. But 
I, I also have experience coming into your lives where people will come in and try and disprove the things you've said, but you've come with evidence. You've mm. come with like the hadiths and stuff. So it, you do back up, you do back it up from where I'm standing, and then mm. I can go away after those lives and do my own research and look into the things you've said mm. in your lives and and others as well. Um, and then I can kind of take it from there, you know. Mm. So I noticed actually you started doing duets of my lives. May I, may I ask why, if you don't mind? Yeah, so I I usually duet the li the videos that you do that are based on Shirk. Because I okay. knew nothing about it before I came to your live. I was really hated, honestly. Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's very interesting that you didn't. So no one's told you about what shirk is and its forms. No, I had no, I, I had no wow, idea. That's so I think that was another thing that, like, when I saw you spoke about it, and Muhammad Karsam spoke about it as well, because it was mentioned in his dreams. It was a huge insight for me. It was something I knew nothing about. Um, so I do at those videos because I think they're extremely interesting and I learn a lot from them and I think it's good for, I mean I have a very small platform here but if I can share your videos that talk about those things, something that's so important, mm. then I think it's good for me. And then the same, I, I will share a few of the ones that um, Muhammad Karsam talks about his dreams because again mm. I believe in the dreams. So Okay, mashallah. Have you spoken to anybody else um, about Muhammad Karsim? Because from what you're saying, it seems like uh, that your main go-to at the moment is my TikTok channel. But have you yeah. looked at maybe his website, at his dreams on his website? Have you looked on his own YouTube channel? Have you looked? Have you spoken to anybody else who who believes in Muhammad Qasim and people who don't believe in him? Like, have you looked at both sides? Yeah. So I've definitely spoken to people who don't believe in Muhammad Qasim's dreams. Mm. Um, I have spoken to a few sisters as well who um, either are or are on the fence and doing their own research. As for um, the YouTube channels and stuff, I do actually follow Muhammad Karsam's YouTube channel as well as The Call of the Covenant. So um, he has them translated into, he's got the subtitles up on his videos, right? Yeah, subtitles. So, so, so were they adequate for you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I just read the subtitles when I watched those videos. Okay. And what do you think of his character? I mean, from watching his videos, you see him standing there talking like a lot of people when they come forward, they have this, they look at him and they think, you know, I think you've seen enough. I don't want to repeat it, but you've seen what people say about him because of the way he stands and the way he speaks. Like, what's your own view as Kaylee? Like, what do you think about, about this individual when you see him on camera and talking and his mannerisms and etc.? I think he sounds very down to earth and very genuine. I think mm. it's also very clear to see when you listen to him speak and you see him in videos that mm. he he is just like a normal man who's mm. sharing his dreams because yeah. he's been asked to share them. He doesn't claim to be anything but that. It's true. So it's I think you, you really feel that when you when you listen to him speak and he's telling you everything mm. he doesn't he doesn't try to put, ever proclaim something that he d he doesn't believe he is do you know yeah. what i mean yeah absolutely I, I know what you're saying yeah have you seen anybody come with any any solid arguments where we've kind of been a bit bedazzled by what they've said and we look confused or anything like that honestly no really well, the, the the lives that I've I've been a part of, like I've been in the the comments and stuff when I've come to your channel, mm. I you've had many people come up and try to dispute the things you've said, and mm. um, from my experience, I've never I've never had an, seen anyone come on that's had like anything to say that kind of you can't back up like you and the other brothers that have come up on the panel. Mm. Have you noticed that we're not one group of people from one country? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's quite refreshing to see that you're like the, literally the first person in Scotland, first person, the first person in Scotland to to believe in the dreams of Muhammad Qasim. Mm -hmm. So, um, what do your family say about you being a Muslim? Um, my my family are absolutely fine with me, me being a Muslim. My mm. my mother is a Protestant and mm. my stepdad is a catholic so they already mm. have a few difference of opinions within yeah. their own faiths but yeah um yeah no that when i when i told them i had become a muslim the same with my my sibling they they were all fine with it with the decision they said as long as i believe that that you know i'm fine with my beliefs and i'm happy and content then then that's you know the main thing have you told your your family about this man who's having dreams like have they said anything about this or 
So I have mentioned it to my to my mother briefly. Okay. Um, she obviously she wasn't really uh, aware of of Muhammad Karsim um, or the dreams, but she she kind of has the opinion as long as you're going to the right people and you're looking at the right sources and you're going to the like the Quran and the Hadiths and stuff and the information adds up to the things he says and the dreams he has and stuff. Then mm. there's no harm in looking and there's no harm in educating myself. I know there's a lot of people in my comments that are unhappy about the things I'm saying. I think it's very important to remember that I am a new Muslim and I'm learning and I am seeking advice. The thing is as well, like I'm not forced to to believe these dreams and I'm doing it at my own accord. Again, there's nothing wrong with having difference of opinion by any means and I'm okay with that. But I do think the negativity and the fact that people just kind of jump on you without asking you questions or asking what it is specifically that you believe in or you're interested in learning about it's um i don't know i think I, since not even since saying i believed in the dream since saying i had an interest to learn about muhammad Karsim, i've had a lot of people be really unhappy about that and really upset about it which I, I'm not saying that some of those people, it doesn't come from a good place, but... Mm -hmm. I'm I, sure it doesn't. I'm sure they're trying to help you. Why yeah, wouldn't they be? Yeah, why yeah, wouldn't I they do be trying think, to help you? I do think it's... I do think it comes from a good place, but I... Mm. I don't think leaving certain comments... Um, Has anyone come to you with sufficient evidence that will take you away from this, what we're talking about? Have they given you any proof or any evidence to suggest this is all fake, a farce, false, he's a liar? Put you any evidence of any kind to suggest that these people are wrong? Look, here's the proof from the Quran and the Hadith that they're wrong. Because surely if they want to pull you away from something like this, isn't that something that would be the best thing to do? To give you proof? Because you want to go to the truth, don't you? And so yeah. do I. So if someone bought me proof, I'm happy to say, if you bought me the proof, I would leave. And I, I was happy with this, I would leave. So has anyone done that for you? Have they bought you sufficient evidence for yourself? Because you made up your mind on your own, right? So has anyone bought you any evidence, like from the Quran or the Hadith, to prove that we're wrong, or Muhammad Qasim is a liar, or anything like that? No. For me, no. Um, I, I feel like if somebody had given me enough, um, or given me any type of proof or evidence, then I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't still be claiming that I believe in his dreams. Yeah. Um, and... As for user 007, um, <laughs> I don't claim Muhammad Karsim to be the Imam Mahdi. I believe in his dreams. What's your plans from here? What what is it that you're? What, what are you aiming for? What are you looking to try and do? What are you looking to try and achieve in believing the dreams? Is there any goal for you? Is there any financial goal for you? No. I mean, is anyone paying you? Um, Nobody's paying me to to say I believe in his dreams. If you could say something to everybody who is here, um, what what advice would you give to people in relation to this matter of Muhammad Qasim? I would say, don't focus on the fact that people claim or don't claim him to be the Imam Mahdi. Look into his dreams and watch the videos that he makes. Um, because for me, I, it never was the number one thing that people were claiming him to be the Imam Mahdi. Um, it was always just about the dreams because for him that's his purpose here is to spread the dreams yeah he doesn't make claims for anything else he just speaks mm. about um speaks about the dreams mm. so i think that's what i would say if you're interested to learn more about muhammad carson because i i still am learning a lot i don't i don't know enough to mm. to give real insight i would say to maybe those who are who are also learning but Definitely look into the dreams and look at his videos. And again, don't focus on the fact that people are making claims that he's an Imam Mahdi if you're just finding out about Muhammad Karsim. Mm. So um, where would you direct people to go to find information about Muhammad Karsim? Well, what's the best place for you and for people who are like you, you know, reverts to Islam or people who are who maybe don't speak the Arabic or Urdu language? Like where, where, where did you go to, uh, to find out about Muhammad Karsim? I went to the Call of the Covenant YouTube channel. Okay. There is a lot of there's a there's a good um, twenty seven minute documentary on that YouTube page on Call of the Covenant mm. that you can watch, and there's plenty other videos as well that talk about his dreams. Um, so I would say if you want to know more about him 
and the things that he talks about his dreams then i would definitely go to call of the covenant youtube okay. channel and check that out for more okay information. cool so you wouldn't send people to my channel man what's that all about i mean, <laughs> I mean that's a fair point that's a fair yeah. point <laughs> it's okay don't worry has any of the people who help muhammad qasim or support him or believe in his dreams made you feel uncomfortable because if they have tell me now and i'll deal with no you. no really you sure yes if you had something that you wanted to say to muhammad qasim what would it be oh, that's a good question yeah oh gosh i don't know let me think To be honest, I think if I was if I was sat with or speaking to Muhammad Karsim, I would ask him to tell me about his dreams. Okay. Because that's where my interest lies, mm. and I think I would want to hear it firsthand from himself yeah. about the dreams he's had, and I think that I think it would be great to hear from him firsthand about the dreams. Cool. That's cool. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's actually quite a cool, cool request, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. Because you know, hearing it from his mouth is something else. You know, reading it on yeah, a piece yeah. of paper is one thing, but actually hearing it from from the source, you know, um, yeah, you, you right. That's, that's a really good, really, really cool thing. So I'll pass that over to him anyway, just so you know. I will, I will inform him. <laughs> um, but uh, um, Kaylee, I would like to thank you very much for coming onto my live today. It's been an thank absolute you. pleasure having you here, and I just want everybody to. Um, just take a moment to think about um, what's been said here today. This is Kaylee. She's a revert to Islam. Um, she believes in the dreams of Muhammad Qasim and she has herself, in her, by her own admission, said that she's not forced. No one has forced her to believe in these dreams. She came to her conclusions herself. She did her own research and she asked people around uh, about Muhammad Qasim and she's actually sat on both sides of the fence. So um, here you go, you have an unbiased individual who doesn't come from a Pakistani background or doesn't come from an Islamic background um, who believes in the dreams of a man from Lahore in Pakistan called Muhammad Qasim bin Abdul Karim. Thank you very much for coming and it's been an absolute pleasure. Do you want to say anything else before we go? No, 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 that was great. Thank you so much for um, speaking with me. No, you're welcome. Um, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.